Hey everyone, Professor Hank here. So today we're going to take a look at different types of variables in Java, their scopes, as well as different data types. So let's go ahead and get started. So there are three general types of variables and they are going to be local variables, there's instance variables, and there are static variables. So a local variable is a variable that is defined inside of a method. So let's create a new class, which we'll call bars. And in that class, I'll create a method called uh, print. And in that method, I'll create a local variable, which I'll call int x, uh, and I'll initialize it to zero. So this is a local variable. Its scope is the method in which it is defined. And just like in C++, you define variables by including a data type, a name for the variable, and then um, you assign a value to it. Okay, now if I wanted to print out the contents of this variable, then I could do something like this. I could say system.out.println. Okay, now in my main class here, I will have a constructor, and this is going to get automatically called when we instantiate the class demo. And main gets called automatically by the Java Virtual Machine. So this is our entry point to our program. And so that's going to cause an instance of class demo to get created. And then this method right here will automatically get executed. And so what I'll do here is I'll create an instance of the vars class. So v0 equals new bars. So this looks very similar to what you're used to in C++. So now if I want to invoke that print method there, I can do v0 dot print. Now if I run this, compile and run it, you're going to see the output, you're going to see that zero and there it is right there, right? This is the uh, print method. So we'll do a little system dot out dot print line here just to make it easier to see. We'll say, um, you know, now entering the print method, right? Just so we can see it a little bit easier. Now, the scope of this variable X is gonna be this method here. And so we'll see that if I try to create another method, let's say we call it update, and we try to assign a value to that variable, right? So let's say X equals 99. You know, that's not gonna work. We're not gonna be able to compile. We're going to get error messages because I'm trying to access with this method right here, a value that is only in scope or variable that's only in scope within this method here, because this is a local variable. Now, if I want to do something like this, then what I need to do is I need to create an instance variable and an instance variable gets created when you define it inside of a class but outside of all the methods of that class. So I might have something that looks like this. So I might say something like, um, you know, int y, something like this. And I might assign it, I don't know, 99. Okay, so now the scope of this variable right here, this instance variable, is going to be all the methods within that class. So if I wanted to then change the value, of y say in my update method i could do something like this i could say y equals y plus one and that's going to work just fine um, because it is in scope y is in scope from this method here because it's in scope for everything that's defined in that class and so here i might decide that i'm going to print out um, the contents of the y variable right so i could do something like this so then if I go down into my constructor down here and I do v0.print and then I do v0.update and then I do v0.print once again, then you're going to see that, you know, that value has changed, that that y has changed. So you can see that y went from 99 right here to uh, 100 because we added one to it. Right, because remember we initialized our y variable with 99. So an instance variable behaves this way, but there's another feature of it too. It's called an instance variable because every instance of the class has their own copy of that variable. So let's say that I created a second instance 
of the bars class. Okay, so that means that V0 here has got its own instance of Y and V1 has got its own instance of Y. So those are two separate variables for two separate objects. Okay, so if I then go down here and I do something like, uh, you know, we'll do system.printline, you know, output for V1, just so we can make it easier to see in our output the results, right? So we'll have output for V0 and we'll have output for V1. So, you know, if I was to do V1.print here and do that, then you're going to see that, you know, we've got 99 still in that, you know, set of output here. This is the results of the output for V0, the V0 object, right? So we did our update and then the Y went from 99 to 100, but for V1, it's still 99 because it's a completely separate instance variable, right? So each copy of the uh, VARS object has its own separate variable, okay? Very much like any other object oriented programming language. So the last type of variable we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at a static variable and a static variable is going to require the static keyword. So I might do something um, like this. I might say static int z equals five. This is a static variable and that is a variable that is shared across all instances of the class. Okay, so let's do a um, update and we'll do something like uh, z equals z plus two and then we'll also have a print right so we'll do a print here too for z so system dot out dot print line z okay so every instance of this vars class is going to be sharing this same variable z right so now if i do uh, v0 dot print right then I do the update. You're gonna see that that Z is gonna change, right? We're gonna see the initial value, which has got um, five in it. Then we'll do the update, which is gonna to add to it. Then we'll see seven, right? But then if I go to the second instance, V1, I do print, we're gonna see the seven again because both instances, both instance V0 and V1 are going to share that same Z variable. Okay, so let's take a look at the output. So you can see there's the Z, right? When we first called print the first time, it was five. Then we called update and then called print the second time. It got updated to seven. And now V1 is just going to print out the contents of that shared Z variable. It's static. It's shared amongst all instances of the class. So V0 and V1 share the static Z variable. Okay, so those are the three types of variables and their scopes. So now let's talk about the different data types in Java. So, so we've got two broad categories. We've got primitives and non-primitives. Okay, so primitives are, are built-in data types, basically. So you've got, you know, int, byte, care, double, float, boolean. You've got a short... You've got a long, and for non-primitives, these include things like classes, right? So, you know, that class bars, that's a non-primitive because we created that ourselves. But you've also got, and this is kind of strange, but um, arrays are non-primitives. They're not, they're not going to behave like what you're used to in C++. Okay, so, you know, what are the differences between these data types okay well with the boolean you can uh, imagine what that is right so for boolean that's going to be true or false okay and so when you've got data type care that's going to hold a single character and a care is two bytes long a boolean is one byte okay and you got a short which is going to be uh, one byte long and you've got an int which is four bytes long and you've got a long which is eight bytes long 
and you've got a float, which is four bytes, and you've got a double, which is eight bytes. So what are the differences between all of these? What I mean, what what's the point here? So, okay, so cares hold characters, shorts hold um, small integers, integers hold a bigger range of ints, of integer ver uh, values, uh, long holds an even bigger range, and then float and double are your uh, floating point data types. Okay, so let's look at some examples of this. You know, we can create a Boolean variable, which we can assign either true or false. And the default for the Boolean is going to be false. It defaults to false. Okay, and then we can have a character data type and we can assign it to whatever we want. Um, and use single quotes around a single character, just like in C++. Then we have the byte data type, which we'll call uh, BB in this case. And that is going to be for very, very, very small uh, numbers. And it defaults to zero, but uh, all side at nine defaults to zero. Okay. And the character data type defaults to a Unicode character. That guy right there, Unicode, Unicode zero. Um, you've got the short which is one byte and uh, that defaults to zero as well. I'll initialize at the 88, so that defaults to zero and has a range of negative 32,768 to positive 32,768. Um, you've got the int data type. This also defaults to zero, but I'll assign it, you know, 66. And this defaults to zero also. And the range is Quite a bit bigger than that and it's going to be million and something to positive two million and something right so you've got that and then you've got a long which is eight bytes and can hold a much bigger range of numbers i'll initialize it to negative 44 whatever you'll notice that these are all signed right there's no signed or unsigned version of this so these defaults to zero and the range is truly uh, ginormous or along, that's gonna be something like this. Uh, like I said, it's really, I mean, really, 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 really huge, right? So long is eight bytes and it's four shorts, two bytes, uh, one. And, you know, the difference is, you know, the range of values that these things can hold. And the byte uh, is gonna be able to hold, I should put this range in here also, negative 128 to uh, positive 127. So this uh, range here, range is this, right? So, I mean, you know, if this thing is one byte, I mean, and you only need to store a value within that range, then you, know, you can save some memory by using the byte data type instead of, you know, trying to, you know, use eight bytes for a long, for example, right? So you can optimize your memory usage there by picking the appropriate data type for the range of values that you're expecting. There you go, we've also got the float and we've got the double. And those are your floating point data types. And the difference between them, they can either, either one of them can hold a unlimited range of values. The big difference is between single precision and double precision values, right? So uh, remember that um, you, know, you have float F equals, you know, say, you know, 3.14 uh, F, right? So this is a single precision floating point variable and it defaults to zero. The default is 0, 0.0 uh, floating point, right? So, and you've got the double precision. And so this might be 3.1459 or something, right? And that's gonna be double precision and that defaults to 0, 0.0 double, right? So, you know, what, what's the difference? You know, if they both hold floating point numbers, then who cares? Well, you know, the double is precise out to uh, more decimal places than the float is, right? So uh, float is accurate out to something like seven decimal places and a double is accurate out to something like 15. Okay, so now you have the basics of the different types of variables how to define them, how to access them. And um, you also know the different data types uh, for the variables, the primitives. We looked at the primitives here. We'll look at non-primitives in later videos, okay? And as usual, if you're a student of mine and you have any questions, 
feel free to email me through Canvas or drop by my online Zoom office hours. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.